Hi, welcome to this video tutorial explaining how I've set the Vestax VCM600 uh, USB MIDI controller together with Ableton Live 8. My name is Martijn Kuilema and I live in the Netherlands and I'm a DJ, producer and label owner of Dimpleman Records. And in part one of the video I will explain the mixer section. All my channels are programmed in the same way and I will uh, show you how I've set channel 5 for DJing. When we look at channel 5, at the top there's the EQ section. This controls the EQ3 plugin in live. The three rotary buttons for high, mid and low. And it has uh, three band mute buttons and I will let you hear. Then we go to the two push buttons, mute and solo. Mute is for muting this channel. Solo is for soloing it. And solo can also be used as a PFL function, so you can uh, cue, preview this track of your headphone. If you set this in live, if your audio interface has more than two outputs. Otherwise it's just the solo function. Then we go to the pen rotary knob. As a DJ, I never use a pen effect. And what I did is I assigned this to be my gain control. So I can adjust the volume of the track to the volume of other tracks. And this controls the separator plugin of live. And it controls the output parameter. Default, uh, when the knob is in the middle, is at about minus 8. And when Turn to the left at the lowest, lowest position it's at minus 16 and when fully open it's at 0 decibel. It's very handy to put the default um, value to about minus 8 decibels because this prevents that your track will enter the clipping red sound. Over here this red sound sounds very awful and now when I throw the fader fully open, it doesn't enter this side. Very handy. Then we go to the send A, send B rotary knobs. Send A is for controlling the return A, a main reverb effect. Send B, B is for controlling the return B, which is a delay effect. I will let you hear. Ok, then we go to the frequency section. This controls the outer filter plugin of live. A big rotary knob and a smaller one. The big one is for the cutoff parameter over here. And the smaller one is for the Q parameter below that. Me personally, I don't prefer the resonance because I think it sounds yeah, a little bit awful, harsh, ugly. So I never use this, but just to be safe, when I accidentally turn this one instead of the send A effect, uh, nothing will happen now. And this is because my minimum and maximum value are both set to the standard 0 0.82, so nothing will happen. So there will no, be no peak over here. Only the big one is working. Then there are the three push buttons below, track, clip and CF, CF assign, track is for viewing the plugins of this clip, clip is for viewing its waveform and CF assign is for assigning this track to the crossfader, but I never use the crossfader when DJ, I always do it like this. So this is also like the solo, my PFLQ headphone preview function. I prefer to be over here, just above the fader, like on other DJ mixers, so it's just handier this way. Then there are the standard 
clip, play and stop buttons and the fader itself. And when you look in live, the fader is also controlling my Send A reverb effect, which gives a nice mix blending effect. So when the fader is lowered, the reverb is building up and vice versa. Okay, that's it for part one. Uh, now we go to part two and I will explain which effects, master effects, I'm using on the effects side of the controller. Thank you for watching and till next video. Bye bye.